presented by Lead for America Corporation and the University of Texas at El Paso. Video editing, a valuable tool to enhance peer-led team learning for remote learning by Enid Martinez, Daniel de la Hoya, Lester Ibarra, Jacob Najera, Aram Boella, Mahesh Narayan, Jeffrey Sape, and James Vekbar. Hi, my name is Enid Martinez, and I am a senior at the University of Texas at El Paso. I have been a second semester general chemistry peer leader for three semesters, and I'm currently majoring in microbiology. Hello, my name is Jacob Nahara, and I am a peer leader at the University of Texas at El Paso for second semester general chemistry. I am currently a senior and will be graduating this semester with a bachelor's in biochemistry. Hi, my name is Leslie Barra. I'm a senior at the University of Texas at El Paso with a major in computer science, and I am also the head peer leader for Chem 1305. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel de la Hoya, and I'm a Chem 1306 peer leader. I've actually been a peer leader since spring 2019. So I actually went through the whole process of shifting between in-person workshops to online, and it was not an easy task. Transferring to the online remote learning setting really brought up a challenge of how to engage students better. As a computer science person, I find that a lot of the information and knowledge that we actually uh, need to be successful can actually be found in the internet, online, Google it. YouTube, everything like that. They provide a lot of resources that can help us be successful. In computer science, it's a lot of times we don't know the syntax. We don't know how to exactly code certain aspects of it, of a program. But by just looking it up and just finding things online, it can really help us. And with that, I always encourage my students to try and solve the problem on their own by looking it up online or looking up resources, especially videos, because that is the easiest way to kind of translate the information from one person to another. For us peer leaders, the transition from going to face-to-face -face workshops to actually just online wasn't an easy one. But something that helped us transition in an easier way was actually creating videos for our students. We can actually create different videos according to what we want to show to our students. The first one is like this one, the pencil method. This is a video I created for the workbook. It's there for everyone to see. So it was important for me to have everything being concise and as clear as possible. The second type is like this one. This one was for my workshop in specific. It's about titrations and it goes a little more into depth uh, about the topic and things that I couldn't cover during the workshop. The second type is like this one. It's a little bit more like this, the one that I'm making right now. This one was for a recruitment video for the workshop committee. By creating all these different videos, I noticed that I can have different topics and emphasize certain things, right? I wanna make sure that the video that I'm making is just right for the occasion. So, by having all these techniques, I can actually help my students go a little bit more into depth in each topic. And I believe it's a little bit easier for them to follow the topics weekly according to the time and whenever they're most available. Video editing and video creation is a very important skill to have, especially during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of the materials that are found within the workbook are very, very condensed with information. So a lot of the times during workshop, we may run out of time and not really cover the full length of the concepts that are found within each module. In my own personal classes, I began to see a lot more videos being used. And so I began to use a lot more videos in my personal workshop to convey the more complicated concepts of the general chemistry to my students that were just better captured in a video format. The communication, what he, the auditory settings, uh, the visual settings, it, it really helps amplify the learning for the students. So every time I, I always try to enforce students to make sure, try looking at videos first, try looking at certain YouTube channels that provide a lot of knowledge. YouTube, uh, the Pillar YouTube channel, for example, those are all really good resources that I feel like people don't necessarily take into account. It could be very beneficial, but it's so overlooked because it's not a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a peer leader, but I understand that. But at the same time, it helps them kind of better be aware of resources around them, be, be, be better at taking advantage of whatever is around their world. If we were to explore the fundamental pillars of video creation for educational purposes, we must first address the question of how do people learn? In 1948, 
During the Convention of the American Psychological Association, educators organized by a Benjamin Bloom got together to classify what they believed to be the main principles of educational goals. This taxonomy was redefined to be more appropriate for 21st century learning during the 1990s by a former student of Bloom, which was published in 2001. This revised Bloom's taxonomy consists of six major levels of cognitive skills that are considered essential for the learning process. Remembering as the lowest cognitive skill, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and topped off with creating as the highest order cognitive skill in this taxonomy. Let's explore these six categories closer. Remembering knowledge in the form of facts, definitions, or order of events is the foundational level of Bloom's taxonomy as it relies only on recollecting information and no additional thought process. Memorization does not reflect actual understanding of concepts. Understanding a given concept or process is often evaluated by asking the learner to reiterate the facts they know and express them in their own words. By presenting problems requiring the comparing and contrasting of information, or by challenging the learner to explain the subject they remember to someone that knows less of that material. This is a minimum level of mastery that is expected in students who participate as peer leaders for any subject. For the third level of Bloom's taxonomy is applying prior knowledge to execute tasks related to that knowledge. For peer leaders, this manifests itself during workshop. Any first time peer leader must overcome this threshold on their own after training when they come face to face with their students for the first time. Stress factors that the peer leader may experience can come from their efforts to successfully implement what they know during their own workshop in a way that their students learning the material for the first time may understand. The fourth level is analyzing, otherwise known as critical thinking skills. This level of learning challenges the individual to break up complex concepts into smaller, easier to process categories. At the University of Texas at El Paso, an experienced general chemistry peer leader that has become comfortable with the first three levels may proceed to challenge themselves further by taking part in revising the course's workbook or aiding the professors with technical difficulties, especially since the sudden shift to online learning by taking an active role in evaluating exam questions and testing conditions. Which brings us to the fifth level, evaluating. Evaluating here means having the confidence to make executive decisions that affect the entirety of the program and the students the program caters to. For our group of peer leaders, this has manifested itself as officer positions within the program that may implement changes to the program itself to better serve both students and peer leaders by taking initiative over how material should be delivered in the published workbook every semester as well as how to maintain standards within the peer leading program for the future. The highest order of cognitive skill listed in Bloom's taxonomy is creating. This level of cognitive skill is often left to qualified, trained educators that have gained mastery over the subjects that they teach. And they exercise the skill during lesson planning, activity developing, and adjusting their methods based on feedback. This element is not limited to professional educators. As the name implies, students have the potential to boost their creativity and participate in creating unique content that reflects their personal experiences with a specific subject. This brings us back to the video creation process and why it is so important during, but not limited to, the current circumstances of remote learning. Before beginning the physical process of creating videos, we must organize the information that we wish to convey. Thorough research on even the simplest topics for educational purposes 
really sets the tone for how the entire process will be handled. Research applies to both factual sources and creative sources from similar videos or interactive websites to begin visualizing the delivery format of our video. Once we begin to visualize separate ideas, it is good to document them in a storyboard of some kind. This part may be done with specialized software, but it can also be as simple as creating a skeleton PowerPoint presentation to set the direction that the video should follow. Then, one of the most important factors to creating the most concise product possible, we create a script to fit the storyboard in order to spend the least amount of time working with software to edit out extraneous footage such as silent spaces or unnecessary information. Script writing may seem daunting at first, but this process is best done concurrently with the design planning of the video. An effective educational video takes into consideration the intended audience. Knowing the audience helps determine the jargon of the script and if it is appropriate to include pop culture references personal testimonies, pure data, etc. The learning goals of the video must also be considered prior to creating any content, as this helps the creator stay on track and avoid overloading the intended viewers. Then ask yourself, what kind of video style fits the information that will be conveyed? Is the video intended to provide an overview of a concept that is best represented with strong visuals in the form of moving clips or animations? Is the video intended to give a step-by-step -step solution tactics that is best represented with a Khan Academy style format of working through a problem? If so, is it possible to include opportunities for the viewer to test their comprehension of the topics? These are all questions that should be answered early in the video creation process. This video was made with equipment and software that are either standard for any Apple computer, smartphones, or that were free downloads available for both PCs and Macs for video editing, screen recording, and self-recording. For large or professional projects, there are of course high budget options for equipment and software for animations, editing software, professional lighting, and professional cameras. And with that, we conclude this presentation with my favorite quote that reminds us why education is so important. Thank you.